Welcome to Down with Joe DeRosa. One topic, one hour, one guest. And it is a very special episode today because my guest is Bill Burr. Oh, Joey Roses. And the topic is the first official episode of Uninformed. Uninformed. This is sort of a loosely based Uninformed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you do the intro, Bill? Why just don't like you the- go fuck yourself. <laughs> just like the good old days. Uh, I can't even remember how we used to do the intros, Joe. We do them fucking once every seven years. <laughs> you, we have not done an Uninformed in I don't know how many years. The last time we did one, Jesus George fucking Bush Christ. George Bush was still in office. Yeah, we were in, I think I was featuring for you at a club. That's how long ago it was. You were still doing clubs and I was still opening for you. And that you were was, still in New York. Yeah. Was I in LA? Yeah, barely. Gives a fuck. Like Let's a get year. on with it, Joe. Yeah. You got a very special microphone, and I got this shitty one. I don't no. like how yours is in like that. Uh, That's the better who, one. Who are those guys who dress up like uh, spacemen, and they do the disco music that you can't stand? <laughs> oh, Daft Punk? Yeah. I like got, Daft got Punk. The Daft, no, you, the, the, you got the Daft Punk one. Oh, I thought you said you didn't like them, because I, I thought they were good. I don't like that last album they did. It was too like disco-y. I didn't like it. I liked the first two albums. What do you mean disco-y? They were wearing. They were in the future, Joe. They were dressed like R two D two. It sounded like um, who was the the lady that the lady that Flo- sang Florence, Florence Anderson? Love me, love me, da, baby. Oh, Linda, Linda McCarthy, <laughs> McCartney, Donna Summer, Donna Summer. It sounded like Donna Summer to musically. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Yeah. I got to do the boo do. Yeah, they're bringing it back, Joe. I didn't like it. Joe, I didn't once like in a while, it. you got to bring it back. Whatever you're doing, you just you just bring it back. Bell bottoms. I'm bringing them back. Bring them on back. Well, Joe, if you could bring something back, what would you bring back? Oh, Joe, man. if you could go back to the deep riches. You know what I would bring back? Huh? You know what I'd bring back? A bottle of Makers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bring back. Uh, I really miss when McDonald's had those styrofoam boxes for the burgers. I, I, I really enjoyed it. It felt like more of an event when it came in the styrofoam thing. And oh, it was I was just wadded up in that piece of paper. Yeah. Now it's just in a piece of paper. It's all shitted up in there. And I loved when they had the McDLT where the one side was hot and the other side was cold and you put them together. I would bring back the McDLT. That's what I'd bring back. And Dude, that giant. That to me, I, I liked all of their sandwiches for the most part, but that McDLT was a whole bunch of hype over nothing. It, it was, was like a high energy comic with no joke. They were. <laughs> Just Dude. up there, like, you know, a lot of my shit. <laughs> yeah. Screaming and yelling with nothing behind it. I was like 11 when that came out. So I, that's all I needed to see was that long box that you could, let, that was like a transformer where you put the burger together Keeps yourself. The hot side hot and the cold side cold. Yeah, it was awesome. And they used to have the refrigerator Perry doing the commercials. Remember that? Yeah, that was like 85. Yeah. 86. He'd, he'd eat like six of them or something. Dude, you know, he was only like 300 pounds, like 302, 305 or something like that. Now entire offensive lines are weighing, averaging like 318, 320. They're getting bigger, Joe. They're getting faster. Was he was he b- built or was he just fat? Um, He was like 6'1", 300 pounds. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, I don't know. Back then when, when I was growing up and you looked at football cards, like in a defensive lineman – or an offensive lineman was like 275, 280. Right. And then a linebacker was anywhere from 235 to 250, and everything moved up. Then all of a sudden, like... Well, wait a minute. Slow down. Perfect, oh. perfect for uninformed. What's a linebacker? What does that mean? All I understand right. defensive let's, let's lineman means say, you're Joe, on the line. You're, you're looking at them, they're lined up. you got the guys who are looking like they're uh, going to imitate dogs. Yeah. And they're all on their all fours. That would be a defensive lineman. Right. Or an offensive lineman. Yeah. Okay. And then behind the defensive lineman, the guys standing up who don't look quite as big as the guys pretending to be dogs, but they're bigger than the guys standing behind them. Those are the linebackers. I get it. They're backing the line. Yeah. yeah I never line, knew that. That's back, what that. Okay. I never even thought of that. <laughs> they back the line. I have no idea. Are you kidding? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> they're back. They're like the backup for the line. Backup for the line. And then you got your corners. They're on the side. Then you have your safety, Joe. Like, oh, shit. He got through the defensive line. The, right. the linebacker's backing up the line. The corners, they, they don't have the right angle. Then you got your safety. This is the this is the final fucking guy. Turn your key, right? Right. If this guy blows it, Joe, it's, um, it's over. And okay. So what's the safety do? He's like the last-ditch effort, like the ejector seat yeah, guy? Yeah, he basically, you know, if there's a guy who's really good at, uh, you know, catching the ball there and there's already somebody covering him, he usually comes over to... 
You can take he covers over the top. They All get right. underneath and he's over the top and in right in the middle, like a like the patty on the McDLT. He's keeping the cold side cold, and All the other right. guy's right in his fucking armpit trying to block him, so he's keeping the hot side hot. Now, who are your Super Bowl picks for this year? Joe, I'd have to go with the St. Louis Cardinals uh-huh. and the Kansas City Royals. Great teams. Great teams. Great teams. Very physical. Very I physical. know that those are baseball teams. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Who are my picks, Joe? I don't fucking know. I've been so goddamn busy, I can barely even watch the Patriots. I still haven't. I know they beat the Chargers this week, but I haven't seen the game. I did tape it, though. Patriots have a strong line this year. Yeah, they do. They do. They have a strong line of backers, too. Back they that do. Line. They do. I like the way the Patriots play. I have always liked it. Well, I've always yeah. liked it. They're what you call a charging team. Did you know all their players are from Vermont? All their players are from Vermont. 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 The only team in the NFL where all the players are from Vermont. Yeah, they call, the, they call their line the snow show because everybody's from Vermont. Did you That's know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they call it snowing outside. That's well, what that's they what say they and then they run when they blitz room. in. It's snowing outside. And they all do a shot of maple syrup. <laughs> you know there's a massive heroin problem in Vermont? You'd never know that. There's a massive heroin problem everywhere. Everywhere. I have a friend whose nephew died of a heroin overdose recently. Yeah, I think everybody knows somebody. I know two people in the last year died of that. It's coming. It's like really like back. Bringing it back, Joe. See, They're what they should have done was bring back the styrofoam fucking things there for the McDLT. And what did they do? They, bring they brought back, back heroin. Instead. Yeah. You know why that is, Joe? Because we went over there and we wiped out the fucking Taliban, at least drove those hairy guys right into the mountains, and then all the farmers were just like, well, shit, those guys are gone. Let's fucking start making some poppy seeds again. Yeah. And then they go around, and they slit them, and they, they ooze it all out there, and then they sell it for like $3 to some fucking, uh, you know, drug pin guy. It's the highest selling drug of all time. Is what? Heroin. Most people think it's cocaine at or what, marijuana. At what part? Of your life, Joe, are you going to finally try it? At what point would you feel safe enough to be like, what the fuck, I'm old anyways? You know, Wasn't right. there a movie about a guy who did heroin late in life? I don't know. Like 77, maybe? I think it was the uh, Freaky Friday, wasn't that one? <laughs> yeah. Freaky Friday? Yeah, Freaky Friday. It's a Something Disney like movie, and they do heroin, they switch bodies. You yeah. know what I mean? He's like, oh, you know mom, I'm- you got it easy. You're nodding off doing heroin, and I got to go to school and take a spelling bee. So what? then Christy McNichols like, all right, you little cunt. You want to switch places? Here's what I want to do. Cut to the jaw. Here's what I want to do. I want to make one of those body switch movies, but the kid switches with his dad, and then he's got to fuck his mom when he's in the dead. <laughs> when he's in the I think dead, want to make button. a weird porno. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, you know, I think it'd be gross. Finds out his mom's a fucking like whore. <laughs> She's out of control. He sees this uh, whole filthy side of her. Jesus, Joe. He never actually bangs her. He just, ha- you know. He's just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's like in Back to the Future when his mom's like coming on to him because she doesn't know what's going Oh, yeah. Kid. Well, then they already did it. Yeah, Michael yeah. J. Fox never actually banged her. You got a good point. He had to. He was supposed to grab her boobs, though. That was like the thing. He was going to get fresh with her. So the whole point was he was going to get fresh with, with her. So, uh, so then George McFly could open the door and save her. Well, Joe, what kind of fucking. What kind of like. Like. What kind of issue did whatever writer who came up with that fucking angle? <laughs> and he came, what kind of mommy issues did he have that he put he put that in a comedy, man? That's fucking creepy. I always it's intense. I, I always felt that that part of the movie, the only part of the movie that I didn't like. You know, I was of age when that came out. It was like perfect for my age group, which was a fun fucking summer movie. You know, everybody had the fucking little puffy jacket with no arms on it, right? The little vest. Yeah. Right? The life vest. Yeah, just the life. in case the ocean just snatched you. That's one of the inland. best lines in the movie. Kid, why are you wearing a life preserver? Oh, do they have that joke he, in there? Yeah, he wears, an, he wears that orange vest, and the guy in the 50s goes, why are you wearing a life preserver? And then he goes, uh, give me a tab. And then the guy goes, I can't give you a tab till you order something. It's like It was like uh, one of the first movies to do like the... They don't understand the language because they're in a different Who's time on period. First, what's on yeah. second? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. My favorite line in the whole movie is, uh, "Hey, hey, Biff, why are you being such a cunt?" <laughs> right? Yeah, that's on the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray special the Blu-ray. edition. Biff, why are you being such a cunt? I know, and it's, and it's still got a PG rating. Yeah, which was incredible. Well, that scene didn't make it into the movie. That's yeah, a deleted they, they, scene. No, they stuck it in the third one. Oh, it's in the special edition of the first movie that you get on the Blu-rays. You're right. You're right. There's yeah, like but an it's, extended but it's on cut. on the third one. One when they go back to the 1800s. It is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. 
Yeah, that's crazy. Biff. They're in that whorehouse. Why are you being such a fucking cunt? No. Why are you being why are you being such a cunt? Cunt. And then Biff goes, because I like cunt. I think it's his response, right? No. You're thinking of a different movie. What does Biff say back? It just ends there? Biff just goes, oh, come on, Michael. (laughs) (laughs) Who? Did you say Michael? Yeah, Michael J. Fox. (laughs) (laughs) He he just broke character. That's why they didn't put it in there, because they called him by his real name. Right. They saved it for the third one. I love this. This is the movie trivia that a lot of people don't know. I love that they shot it. Joe, we're both out here in Hollywood, so we we get the inside (laughs) stories. Oh, geez, Bill, we're in Tinseltown. Twinkle Toes in Tinseltown. Twinkle Toes in Twinseltown. Joe, you've you've been acting. You've been writing out here. What are some some other inside stories that you've heard that you can blow the lid off of? Bill, I've banged them all. You banged them all. I've banged them all. Who was your favorite? Every actress you can think of. Who was your favorite? I got to say, Judy Dench was tremendous. Judy Dench. I, I would have guessed that. <laughs> Are you allowed to say that without getting in trouble? Can what? you make a joke that you banged Judy Dench? And even if, I'm trying I to remember did. who that is. Dame Judy. She's like 80. Oh, Judy Dench. She plays she plays M in, in the Bond in the new Bond movies. All right. Dame Judy. Dude, like the Bond movies, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it either. It just keeps going. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> He's always on a mountain skiing around and then somebody machine guns him and then he ends up in a sub. Yeah, it's, I don't like when they show his lifestyle because his lifestyle is everything that a douchebag you wouldn't like would be doing. No, it's, no, no. Only if you're a hater. Skiing, yachting. It's like, it's like rich guy shit. It's like, yeah, no, you no, got to no. let go of that, dude. Huh? That's a poor person mentality. Well, well, you just resent them, and you just think, blah blah blah. Joe, you want to you want to get on that yacht and figure out how the fuck did how do you get that yacht? I want the yacht. The skiing uh, thing is dildoy to me. Skiing has always well, come Joe, off you're, as you're dildo. Not, you're not, no offense, Joe. You're not uh, not very athletic. Joe. I'd snap like a twig. You would, Joe. Yeah, I go down that hill. Literally, the equipment you use for skiing has more athletic ability <laughs> than you do. Like if you were to throw all this shit, the goggles and everything, it would get further down the fucking hill than you would. That was my favorite routine of yours, and you you haven't done it in years. What was that? Your routine feels? about ski equipment. Oh yeah. How this is the best we can do, folks. Oh yeah. Yeah. And what's the deal when you're going down? Right. You know, why don't they just make one big ski instead yeah. of having the two on your feet, and then maybe I won't blow out my knee. There you go. That's the old bit. You still That's remember it. I used to do it. Oh, used you to used to remember it. Yeah. Used to kill back in the 80s, Joe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the Seinfeld where... Yeah, it was, Joe. I, I dropped all the jokes I wrote when I was on Coke back then. You know? <laughs> Just you reminded me of a dark place. Bad, bad Coke problem in those days. But you bad, were a lot of fun. Bad, bad, bad Coke. You make me feel so good. Here's what we want to sing that one. Was that Michael Jackson? Bad. No, that's bad boys. Bad, 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 bad Coke. You make going me... up my nose. I don't know. Let's see who sang it. That was the Bangles. Your your bet is on Bangles. No, my bet is uh, Pat Benatar with uh, Debbie Harry playing bass. All right, hold on. Debbie Harry on bass. Once I was a something, it's just something, it's something. Here we go. Who sang this song? Oh, it's uh, uh, Tina Taylor. Bill, you were wrong on all counts. On all counts. Faith Evans. Oh, Jesus. A lot newer than you thought it was. Faith Evans, the one with Biggie, right? Uh huh. Jesus yeah. Christ. And she sang it after he died. That's a real new song, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what we want to do as a new segment on the new How uninformed. Bad after Biggie died was that fucking video when when Puffy did the whole fucking. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it when he was dancing around to that Sting song. Oh, uh, oh, what the fuck was that? I'll be missing you. Yeah, it's it was terrible. I mean, it, it was, was sad that he died, horrible. but it was the terrible song. <laughs> when you saw when I saw that song, I couldn't believe that white people ever stole music from black people. It was that bad. It was so bad. He ruined. He for during that video, he ruined all black music. Just when the song was on, and then you had to remember. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! All all these other guys. Dude, okay. I swear to God, my friend in college told me about that song before I ever heard it. We were high, and he goes, "You didn't hear this?" And he started doing the chorus, and he goes, "I'll be missing you." And I go, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> I didn't oh, believe terrible. him. I didn't believe him. I was like, "You're. J- I'm not falling for this. That's ridiculous." And he was like, "Dude, I swear to God." What do you think he did with that money? 
God only knows, but bought a house just to keep his suits in. All those guys have those crazy that's stories. What I, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. It's just weird. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, did, I hope he gave the money to. He didn't. To Biggie's no. mom. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Maybe he did. I don't know. I shouldn't say he did. Maybe he did. I would hope so. But it was on his. That song was on his album. It wasn't like that song was. Uh, like a special release. That was the only kind of, I'll be honest with you, other than, I mean, there's just shit music in every genre, but the, the only kind of rap that I never just had, I had zero fucking respect for was when they just took a hit song, eliminated the vocals and rapped over it. I hated that shit. But if you, if you diced up like 12 different songs and made it completely different songs from these things like that Jay Dilla character. Yeah, now, that guy's a fucking genius. He's great. But I liked if you he passed if, away, by the way. I know. I know. I liked if you did. I don't know why a that beat, was, Joe. Why he passed away? Yeah. No. Florence Henderson. What, what did she have to do with it? Dude, how long you been out in this town before you don't fucking know Florence Henderson? Uh, don't talk. Don't yeah, the Black don't, Widow. Story, don't talk. Yeah. Don't talk about he that. Went on up the, to her fucking house. Right? Don't talk Barry about that Williams on the podcast. Barry Williams was in the bushes. He's still jealous. Don't talk about that on the podcast. Okay. No. All what right. are you trying to do? You're going to get us both fucking wet. So I danced around it. All right. Fair enough. You did. Don't you yeah. said? All right. Don't say anymore. It was from years ago. Uh, he. Here's what I like though. I don't. I don't mind if they. If if it's a cool sample and it's a good beat. Remember that song. Uh, Forget me nots. I'm not talking about a cool sample. I'm saying you just take the whole fucking song and just replace the and just chorus. wrapped up like uh, do 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 can't touch this. I mean, there was fucking Rick James. See, I don't mind that. I was like he. I was like he turned it. He turned it into a good beat. I, I didn't mind it. No, it already was a good beat, and it was already good. Like to me, there's a difference between taking a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you actually create an entirely different song. For for just to fucking play the song with and then rap over it, sounds like something you should be just doing on a karaoke machine. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know where I stand on that one. Because I like rap songs that have done that, so I guess I can't say I don't like it. I like it. Oh, but that's Joe, okay if you don't like explains it. Explains why I don't like you. Bill. I remember Patrice. What song? What song did you like? The Beat Nuts had a song. Uh, well, he just took the fucking song. They had it, they did just wrapped over. Remember how like, Will Smith uh, sampled "Forget Me Nots" for Men in Black? Remember that song? He sees "Forget Me Nots." Boom, boom. Oh my god, that's a classic example. All horrific. Right. All right, the Beat Nuts did a song that called- puts the whore in horrific <laughs> Joe. <laughs> the Beat Nuts did a song before Will Smith sampled it called "Give Me the Ass," where they just looped that beat and rapped over it and i i thought it sounded cool i liked it i liked hearing them rap over it i didn't like the will smith one though. no no joe you keep acting like when they just take a piece i'm talking about when you just take the whole fucking song you drop out the lyrics and then you just rap over where they're singing the verse and then you switch up the chorus and sort of rap sing your way through it i'm talking about uh, that okay well, did Hammer like do that, that with like, You Can't Touch like This? Like that fucking Puffy song when Biggie died. No, that's terrible. That's every breath you take. But did Hammer do that with You Can't Touch This? I feel he, like he, he only went, sampled he that main thing. For like three quarters of it. I mean, it's the fucking song. All right. That's what I'm saying. Is the part in Super Freak, when he would dance crazy, was that part of Super Freak too? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're in a banjo. That sounded like... You can actually sing, dude. You crushed it when you sang that Huey Lewis song. It's one of my favorite things this year. <laughs> but when you go to imitate guitars or whatever, I have no idea. It's that a- what, did, what you just did. You know how, long, <laughs> like, how many somersaults my brain just had to do to figure out that you were trying to imitate the, the part where he, MC Hammer's dancing sideways? That's <laughs> yeah, what you were just yeah. doing. I don't know what instrument it is. It's a weird instrument. And it's like... Do it again. Oh, oh! <laughs> it it kind of wigs out for a minute, man. It freaks out for for a second. Uh, Joe, I think you're missing some notes in that. <laughs> I wish I could play music on this thing so we could listen to it. Uh, um, let's do the segment we were talking about doing. Joe, let's inform the people. You know, there's yeah. a lot of news out there nowadays, Joe. Let me let me set it up here, Joe. Go ahead. You know, with all the cell phone cameras out there and all the people fucking filming everybody there's all all kinds of news out there there's all kinds of websites there's all different ways to get your information how the hell are you going to filter through all of this well me and joe DeRosa are here to interpret the fucking news for you there you go no more need to watch ted koppel or harry reasoner 
<laughs> Who else is retired? Ed Bradley. Ed Bradley. Walter Winchell. Edward Ed Murrow. Remember Ed, Bra- remember Ed Bradley when he was like 60, got an earring, and that was actually a story? He got an no. earring. What does that mean? Who the hell is Ed Bradley? I don't Ed even Bradley know that was is. the black guy in 60 Minutes. He's All a right. phenomenal fucking journalist, and he passed away, Joe. Here we... T- Without you ever knowing him. Dude, that fucking puppet over here, why would you have that? That thing is so fucking creepy. Uh, it's creepy, isn't it? Yeah. I had a friend staying with me, and he was sleeping on the floor in here, and I pointed to it, and I go, I go, I hope you wake up in the middle of the night and you see that thing laughing at you. It's so creepy looking. What's that? It's from uh, Avenue... No, Seven. no, that's the new material Seinfeld puppet. When we used to do it on the Pete Holmes show. How did you guys not get sued by Avenue Q? I don't know. Did the same guy make it? No. I mean, that's the Avenue Q puppets all look like like Sesame Street puppets. I don't like puppets. you just said that like it's an iconic fucking pup- puppet. I got to tell you, Ron Beddington of Ron and Fez fame told me it was the f- his favorite thing he's ever seen. Funniest thing he's ever seen. Favorite thing he's ever seen. Funniest thing he's ever Funniest seen. Funniest thing he's ever that's seen. That's what he said. Ever. I, I couldn't believe it either. I said, ever. come on, get out of here. But you know, Bill, did he, did he promptly get up and get out of there? What can Walk I say? When you got it, you got it, Joe. When you got the goods, <laughs> you, you are a triple threat, Joe. <laughs> All right, uh, let's interpret the news, Joe. You know what? So we're going to peruse those the guys, websites Joe, and yeah, do this. I don't yeah. even know, need to know what's going on. You read me the headline, and I'll tell you what the story is. Go All on. right, Governor Chris Christie. U.S. is missing, and this is a quote from him. U.S. is missing an enormous opportunity on Keystone. Oh, oh, you know, well, every, once a year, the, the the president gives the Keystone address, right? No? <laughs> Keystone. What would Keystone? Is that cookies? He's a fat guy. He looks cookies. like the kind of guy. That Christy, he looks like the kind of guy that would eat a warm tuna fish sandwich, you know? It's just been sitting out there. <laughs> you know when you do that? He looks like he you loves, think, am I going to get food poisoning? He looks like he loves liverwurst, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he's just, a bratwurst guy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like you an olive loaf fat man. When you live in New Jersey and you look like you're from Wisconsin, dude, that's when you're fat. He is fucking hilarious. Have you ever watched the videos of him dealing with like hecklers and shit? He's he sounds like a comic. Some guy, <laughs> some guy was standing in front of him at a press conference with this sign that was basically something on the sign was in, in was basically saying that Christie wasn't working hard enough. To get like the economy going right. in Jersey again after the storm. Oh yeah, and, I saw uh, that. I yeah, saw and he that. just goes, "All right, all right, you get happy, you got your fifteen minutes." <laughs> it sounded like a comic just shitting on a heckler. There's a boardwalk video where he's walking with his entourage eating ice cream, and somebody starts yelling at him, and he's like ready to throw down with this guy. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that out of the public officials. I can't stand when they do stuff like really? that. Really? And everybody, like, there's so many people, if you just say anything remotely normal, like, they actually find you relatable, and then they'll vote for you. Like, if you ever run in for president in the middle of a debate, and the guy goes, well, Joe, what about you when you blah, 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 and jobs went down by 15%. If you just look at me, like, yeah, yeah. What about when I told you to go fuck yourself? I would right? vote for you in two exactly. seconds. Exactly. And then, oh, I like this guy. I told the guy to go fuck himself. It's a, it's a bunch of horseshit. Yeah. I hate the regular guy moment from the politician where everybody freaks out. I like this guy. He had a burger what? and a beer, and he told now, the heckler to go fuck himself. Not a burger and this a guy. This guy can run the fucking state. Not a burger and a beer thing. I, I know what you mean. I think that's annoying. I want annoying. them to be better than me. At least act like you're better than me. Don't There's show that. as low a class as I have. That's like when the president goes on like like a talk show, like a late yeah, night I know. talk show. I've never been a fan of when the presidents would go on Don't MTV. Don't blur those fucking lines. Yeah, yeah. it's a oh, get off of MTV. Terrible. terrible. Yeah, I don't like when Obama goes on like Letterman. It's like, what is happening? You're sitting in the same seat Don Rickles was just sitting in. Oh, no, forget <laughs> Don Rickles. That, that's actually decent compared to the, some of the shit that's been there. Yeah, I'm not shitting one on Don. Hit, one hit wonders. I'm not shitting on Don Rickles. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to me. It is kind of weird. It is yeah, kind of weird. Absolutely. Yeah. Weird yeah. Al. Weird, weird Al Yankovic is sat in that same fucking chair talking about, you know, no, no disrespect to any of these fucking people, but the pre- you shouldn't be sitting in the same seat. That that's, the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the presence will be there the next night. All right. So. Well, maybe you convinced me. Now, Bill, I'm going to give you some clues as to what this story might be about. Keystone, New Jersey is what I'm going to say. Pipeline. That's your first cue, clue. Oh, pipeline. Oh, okay. They want to run a pipeline from Alaska right through New Jersey. And uh, if old fatso... He's all for it because the the oil looks like hot fudge. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to pour it on his ice cream. 
Yeah, that's good enough for me. All right, Bill, that's one down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Dude, you go. Paul Versey has the funniest fucking bit about that guy. Just saying, like he can't take a fat person in power seriously. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's because they don't show any like self control. Like you're gonna give him the keys to the car to fucking drive. I forget how that fucking. <laughs> that's does. funny, that's man. Funny. That's really funny. All right, here we go. This is an easy one, Bill. All right, hit me with it. Rand Paul would team up with Hillary Clinton on criminal justice reform. Oh, uh, that's because everybody thinks that uh, old clam cakes there is going to run for presidency. So this guy's like he's trying to get up her skirt. So if she makes it to the blue plate special there at the Oval Office, right, all of a sudden uh, he can get some of his shit pushed through. Bill, I don't even understand what you just said. Well, I got to be honest becomes with you. President, this guy wants to be a good. He wants to be good with her, right? He wants to be like that dude that's still behind well, yeah. Janet Jackson holding well, her titties. Strategically, that might be what he's doing. But what do you? What was the last time you think Bill actually banged Hillary? What's the story about? Do you think that's part Wait, of the story? I, I, I got a follow up question, Joe. When is the last time you think Bill Clinton actually banged Hillary? I don't think he ever banged her. Well, they had Chelsea. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. She any did of it. look like her. It did not look like Bill at all. Yeah, I'm not convinced any of it. Who do you think, Al Gore? Do you think he tagged it? He hit it. Gore, but they were fucking swinging like crazy. All those politicians are dirt balls. There's no way they're not swinging. There's no way. They're sending only dick Al pics Gore, on but only, Twitter. But only Al Gore could fuck up being in the White House and still not get laid. He just doesn't seem like he's got the... He's such a dork, man. That's yeah, unbelievable. He's such a dork. He's got a big fat ass. Yeah, he does. You know? You know what he reminds me of? Like when back in the day when he used to work in the warehouse, right? You know, you know, the suits walk around. They got that suit on and the fucking button down shirt. You have no idea how out of shape they are until they have the company picnic. And then these guys would come out there with their fucking love handles and man tits. Be like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> that fucking haberdashery, man. Just Al fucking you Gore. Can hide a lot. Yeah, he's got, he looks like a real beefy titted man. Like a real. Oh, oh yeah. Like Seven Eleven nachos kind of guy. He gets bacon on his sandwiches. Absolutely, He's one of those guys. Absolutely. For I all can't he stand that, by the way. What? There's just something wrong about eating a a, a a fucking steer and a pig at the same time. I don't like it. It's you I don't like a bacon cheeseburger. I, it's in, it's intrusive. I don't this, even, listen, uh, Joe. You know what on, it is? Man. I'll take you, ham on a cheeseburger. I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I don't like it. Okay. The star of the show is the burger patty, all right? You're coming over to his house. Right. Okay? You don't start trying to top this fucking guy. You're a guest in this man's house. You tone it down. He's not and, trying to and top bur- it. Yeah, no, you can't. It's undeniable that it doesn't compliment the burger. It just lets you know, hey, I'm here too. It's like you're trying to tell a fucking story, and this little fucking skinny wrinkled up weasel is screaming over your story trying to guess nah, the end I disagree. Of it. I disagree. I think it's like you bought tickets to see Aerosmith, and you get the bonus of the crew opening up. You're getting a little extra something for your money. Okay, I guess so. You know what? You know who's the biggest offender? Can you at least agree with truffle oil? Truffle oil is the most intrusive fucking thing that's that's entered the... the they just... You remember that? Like, they've, it's kind of dying down, but they fucking put truffle oil in so many great things and ruined them. Like truffle oil, macaroni, and cheese. I want. I would murder. Yeah, I know. I, I know. That does murder. So. Murder the motherfucker who did that. You know what's amazing? The amount of people who can't make good macaroni and cheese. It's like, how do you fuck it up? It's pasta and cheese. There's no way this this yeah. should, this should. How does it go yeah. off the rails? How'd you mess it up, you trash. Yeah, that's like fucking up toast. Well, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, I get, I get where you're going with it. It's the same fucking thing. I get where you're going. How do you fuck up it? toast, Joe? You don't. You don't. You put butter on it. Mac and cheese takes a little more than toast. Oh, you're saying the degree of difficulty? Yeah, you got to bake it. You got to boil the macaroni. You got to get the cheeses. I mean, it's, 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 I, I could see if you burned it. Joe, like macaroni and cheese is like something. That's one of the first things you make when you're learning how to cook. You don't think so, Joe? No, like what, real, what, like what, good what mac of, and cheese? What sort of fucking goulash like, did you make, you goddamn Romanian? Good mac Where and cheese? Where are you from, Joe? Good mac and no, cheese? No, Joe, bad macaroni and cheese. I'm talking, of course, I'm, I'm not talking, talking about good. the craft. You take your tone down. 
I'm not talking about the craft shit out of the box. I'm saying if you make like a real macaroni and cheese, that's a very involved process. Yo, you're like, talking four cheeses. You're talking a breadcrumb bake on the top. You don't know what the fuck you're talking Joe, about. I'd though. like to kick you in the box. I would. I would about that? I'd like to see you try your on fucking, fucking queef foods right now. I fucking stick them right in there. Uh, you know what, Bill? I want you what, to take Joe? those Buster Browns and stick them up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, please tell me the painting on the wall that this came with the apartment. No, I bought it. Why? Do you not care for that? It's a little, I don't know. It's a little shitty and depressing all at the same time. I, I like it because it's kind of abstract and it reminds me of space. I definitely look, reminds me of space. It also yeah. reminds me of the letter G, letter E, <laughs> and uh, where's G and an e? unpopped popcorn. What do you mean? There's your E right there, right? There's your goddamn you see E. Your goddamn E. And then if you come, it's like a backwards G, right? There. It looks like a belt buckle, Joe. That's well, what it, it could also like. be a U on its side. It also looks like a butt crack a little bit. Or some cleavage. It's painted on denim. How much did you pay for that, Joe? 100 bucks. I'll tell you, Joe, you paid 99 too much. Oh, <laughs> zing, bang, boom. Nah, geez, yeah. I, I like it. I, I, I wanna... like how people shamed you into putting your Woody Allen poster into your fucking room here. How That's much not did, why I did it. How much did you get sick of people pontificating? Nobody pontificated except you and Keith. I swear to God, that's not why I did it. I did it because I didn't want to have anything like that looked like postery out in my living room. I wanted to have paintings out there. If you look in that living room, it's wall to wall. So you're taking paintings. your pretentiousness to a whole other level. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know how what far, happens? How, how far are you going to take it? You know it, what Jim? happens when a girl walks in and sees those paintings, Bill? She panties hit the floor. Oh, the clam is juiced. <laughs> That's disgusting. I know, I know. I'm, being, I'm just being gross. All right. <laughs> give me another news story. All I'm, right. a, I'm actually going to try on this one. Go ahead. Give me another. All right, let's story. try. Give me a headline and I'll tell you what the fuck happened. <sighs> Joey, show some music for this. Give me a headline. Yeah. Um, and then you read. Some of these are too depressing. I'll set you up again. Give me a headline. Yeah. Headline. Give me a headline. <laughs> yeah. You read uh, the fucking thing. Wait, hey, hold on a second. I'm tell there. It's a lot about like the terror, the the hostage that got killed. It's too. That's too depressing. I don't want to do that. Uh, all I wasn't right. Wasn't aware anybody was taking hostage. There was a hostage who got killed during a failed rescue attempt. Oh, Joe, and, you're fucking holding me hostage right now with your fucking inability to find a all sort right. of humorous story. Here we go. Ready? Was the guy a civilian? Bill, this is as easy as it's going to get tonight. Cosby. <laughs> Oh, no. Woman alleges Cosby raped her and other Playboy bunnies. Jesus Christ almighty. Now the Playboy bunnies are coming after her. Well, you know, this is a weird thing, Joe, where once once you get up to like 13 people, you're thinking that there's no way this person didn't do it. But once you get up to 80, you start thinking like this is a smear campaign. Now I'm, yeah. start, now I'm starting to think he's innocent. I don't think he's innocent, but it's I don't going, think he did all way, of these. I'm not saying he didn't do this one. I'm just saying I don't, I don't think he did all of them. I think there, it's it's you know so who's bad. Many. You know whose story was bad was that woman who was the supermodel in the early '80s, Janice Dickinson. Yeah, she's done so much partying that nothing she says sounds true because she's sort of still slurring her way through stuff. So you can't tell as it's like. Is this the damage from the drug abuse or is she just making this shit up? Yeah, she's she's kind of a goofball. So it's, you know, she's not the most credible. I'm not saying it didn't Yo, did happen. Did you ever get drugged and raped by a headlining comic you know, on I, the way up? I never got raped by a comic, but I was sexually assaulted once. Well, I mean, it's part of the... I'm talking about it in my act right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was real drunk and this girl just took advantage of me. Oh, you know what? Go fuck yourself. That's what sexual assault That's is. That's sexual assault. I wasn't assault, hurt yeah. by it. I'm not mad. I'm just saying uh, by so definition. So how about having empathy for the victim here? I am the victim. No, she was. Why? She saw you naked. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you walked right, 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 in, right, into, right into it, but Joe. Uh, I, yeah. It's, uh, I, mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't approve of what she Joe, did to me. Joe, how old were you when they, when, when, when some older person put the light out of, out of, out of you, you know, out what of you your mean? soul? Well, well, how old are you when you first got touched? I never got touched. You never got molested? I don't think so. Well, explains your comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I don't think I ever got touched. Not that I can remember, at least. You know? And I was running around the Catholic Church. Nobody was diddling. Yeah. I got away scot free. A couple teachers from my high school went up the river when all that shit went down. But they none of them went, ever oh, fucked oh with me. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? You go from teaching social studies class to fucking getting some payback. Oh, Jesus Christ. They man. went up the river for what? 
Fondulation? Diddle and kids. Couple priests I knew did. Seriously. Ugh. It was in the papers and shit. I'm not, you know, it's not secret. It's, but I was like, holy shit, like. Dude, how do you fucking do that? Like, what What do you sit down and do after? Well, you're sick, so you don't think you did anything wrong. Yeah, I feel what like. Do you, do? you just walk away going, oh, I think that went well. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah, I think they don't. I don't think they know. I, I, yeah, like I, I watched a documentary about it once, and they were like, they were interviewing people that had a, that were sex offenders, and like, they don't. There's something wrong with you. It's like somebody that like. It's like somebody that commits like pre-calculate or premeditated murder. You know, like when somebody like is like, I'm going to go kill people because I enjoy killing people. Like the thing in their brain isn't there that says like, you know, you probably shouldn't do this. Man. It's got to be exciting. To what? Go kill somebody? Yeah, just be like, I'm, you know, what are you doing tonight? And just listen to other people's plans and you're secretly laughing like you guys ain't doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gonna go break the fifth commandment. What the it's fuck a- are you guys doing? <laughs> you gonna go see a movie? Motherfucker, I am a movie. <laughs> you gonna go see a bang bang shoot him up there, Joey? <laughs> if you had to kill somebody, how would you kill them? Like if you had to, if somebody was like, look, you have to kill somebody. I'd kill a drifter and I would, uh, if they were walking down the sidewalk, I'd drive from the other side and right as I came up on them, I'd swerve and I'd open my car door and then that would be it and I'd keep going. And then when the cops showed up, what about that dent you're doing? I'd be like, what, what dent? No, no, no. What I if, was already there. What if this was the really? scenario? Was there a raincoat sticking out of it, sir? You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, yeah. What, but what if this was the scenario? There's a room. Joe, so what? So what's the scenario? Yeah. You're a rapper. <laughs> you jerk. Uh, oh, you There's a room over question. there. There's a person in that room. I Stop say to you, you have to go into that room and kill that person. Here, pick, pick your method of choice. I'm going to gas him. You gas go. yourself because you got to go into the room to do it. No, but I wear like a fucking gas mask. I, I want to do some like uh, the original Batman TV series. Like I throw a fucking smoke bomb in and all this purple smoke comes out. Yeah. And then as they're looking around, I start going. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, how would if I had to kill somebody, how would I do it? I would uh, just go gun, man, because it would just get it done fast. Ah, Jesus, Joe. There's, you know, there's just no left turn with you. What do you mean? All right, let's make it more interesting. Gun. Because I don't want to do it. I'm saying, like, I would do it so to All get right, it over with. well, that with. makes it more interesting. You don't want to do it. All right, here's what you can do. You can either break somebody on the rack, right? What the fuck does that mean? You know, the rack where they fucking tie on that thing and they slowly stretch out your body till your bones break. <laughs> you got to do that. Or head in the vice from Casino. Head in the vice or hedge clippers. What would you do with the hedge clippers? You just sort of... And try to cut Definitely the head Definitely not the hedge clippers. You pussy. I'd do the rack. Ugh. And slowly hear their bones break. Dude, if I had to choose any of those, I'd say hedge clippers. And I would fucking make my head nice and tall. Go ahead. Hit that jugular so I pass out quick. Oh, you mean I get killed? Huh? No, I'm saying if I was just saying if I'm the victim, last thing I oh. want out of all of that is the fucking rack. No, but I'm saying if I had to kill the guy, I'd do the rack because that's probably the least worst, the least bad to look at. So you're still thinking about yourself as this person's losing their life, you fucking coward? God. Hey, man, I got to live with this. That cocksucker's going to be dead. I got to carry this around with me for the rest of my life. Well, just take the hedge clippers. Yeah, no, it's, that's going to scar me. You don't want that visual in your head. Terrible. Do you want to hear the sound of the fucking love? Oh, I don't Jesus. think it would sound that bad. Joe, you know, I, I just sometimes I don't know why I'm friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see... Uh, so um, all, Joe. Oh, God damn it. Hold on. Oh, my oven's going off. Oh, yeah? That's meatloaf. Oh, I'll hold it down. You fucking asshole. You made meatloaf. You didn't even bring it up. I just did. Well, now fuck. you got something to make fun of me. I'm not going to make fun of you. He turns the corner. What kind of a fucking asshole makes meatloaf just for themselves? I love a meatloaf sandwich, you know, the next day. Right? It's all fucking cold. Slap it on some Wonder Bread. What do you what do you put on there? What do you what do you like going? I like going a little mayonnaise and ketchup. Make it extra disgusting, right? You start eating it and that shitty Wonder Bread, right? It just you can't even fucking swallow it. Just sticks to the roof of your fucking mouth. I know this is gross. What do you want from me? This is what happens. The second Joe leaves, all of a sudden it gets gross. Joe, did you make one sad baked potato for yourself too? A meatloaf and some tomato. Did you put a strip of bacon on top of that meatloaf? Nope. Ah, see, look at you. Man after my own heart. And it's a, uh, 
<clears throat> it's a. Uh, is it a kosher meatloaf? It's a lamb and bison meatloaf. Pound of ground lamb, pound of ground bison. Uh, organic, grass fed meatloaf. Or so they say. So they say. What are you yeah, going to do? Like this water's from Fiji. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's right next to the grass fed bison. <laughs> All right, out back. The fuck else are you gonna you feed a fucking dipshit. bison? Huh? Another bison? Uh, whoa. That's what they do. That's what they do. They hey, feed. Folks. They feed cows. Cows. These that's are all vegetarian see- diet. Joe, that's that's what's that? This was all vegetarian. I buy meat that's all vegetarian diet, pre- preferably grass fed. And where do you get this at? <clears throat> you know, markets, butcher shops, supermarket, wherever. That's fucking hilarious. You're not gonna get any of that at a at a supermarket. No, you can get it at a supermarket. No, you can't. Joe, they're it's- lying. Well, maybe they're lying. I don't know. Yeah, they're lying. But if you go to like Whole Foods, they have it. No, oh, Jesus, Whole Foods—that's that, the biggest fucking liar out there. Really? Oh, Jesus. Why? What are they doing? Oh, dude, I didn't want to get into it. <laughs> get into it. Oh. Let's expose. Oh, let's... Chill, let's talk about cans of red spray paint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right next to the apples. I mean, you do the fucking math. All right. Fair enough. Gee, aren't those things looking ripe? Fair enough. What about the oranges? Oh, the oranges are even worse, Joe. Oh boy. They you actually know? murder. All of the illegal immigrants after they pick them every Jesus year. Jesus Christ. I don't think do. you can say that as a joke. That even. Who? I think you have to say you're just kidding. No, I don't. I, I, I feel would feel better if you would just say I'm just kidding right now. Joe, I've never been so more serious in my life. <laughs> Joe, this is such thing in comedy as being absurd. All right. Fair enough. Bill, I'm trying to find fucking uh, like economy Those headlines. Dead immigrants, that supermarket chain. There killed. it is. Here we go. Here's a good headline. I want you to dissect this one. Oh, for Christ's sakes, this website wow, Joe, stinks. You know, Joe. Every once in a while, I have like a, I can see into the future. Kind of have you ever see Poltergeist? Yeah. Instead of walking into the TV, I'm like walking into the future, and I just saw you as an 85 year old man. And what, it, what, it, what was it like? You were sitting in a kitchen that had fluorescent lighting. You were wearing boxers and a wife beater. And you were eating meatloaf by yourself. Uh-huh. And then you just, you fucking collapsed like Al Pacino in Godfather <laughs> 3. <laughs> was there a meatloaf there? And you just rolled out of the chair. Was there a meatloaf? Yeah. Yeah. You had, you had meatloaf. And I just... <laughs> You were you eating it by yourself. Like, that's my prediction. Uh, How are you going to go, that's Joe? It's terrible. My mom heard that. She'd be crying right now. Well, fortunately, your mom's not a fan of anything you do, so I know she's not going to listen to this. Are you going to die alone? Well, you know, <laughs> who knows? Well, I'd I don't... like to think that there'd be somebody standing there. I don't think you're going to. I mean, you're a good 17 years older than any of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll all be here when you go, Bill, <laughs> to wish you well. You know what? And you're not going to make it because you're going to have some gig in fucking Reno. Uh, I'm finished. You, you know what you're going to do, Joe? You're going to send me a text. <laughs> Dude, yeah, you know, it's not going to work out. You know? <laughs> you had a good one. Joe, if you had to send me a text, I'm on my deathbed. You got to send me a text. You're not going to make it. You know I'm laying there waiting to see my good buddy Joey Rose's Dude, and you got to send me a fucking text. That's what I'm doing. Mark my words. What are you going to say, Joe? If they ever tell me I have like a month to live, that's uh-huh. how I'm going out. I'm going text uh, messaging. No, I'm going right to Vegas. Fucking full bar, hotel room, hookers, coke, the whole thing. No, first of all, Joe, you're going to cry. Yeah, I'm going to cry all the way to Vegas and start drinking until it doesn't hurt anymore and just stay in that mode. Until I die on the bed like Nicolas Cage in that movie. Okay, if you had to if you had to kill yourself, Joe, would you go? Would you drink yourself to death? This is a no brainer. You're gonna go for the booze. <laughs> would you drink yourself to death? <laughs> uh huh. Drug like my drugs. I mean illegal drugs. Right. Or would you uh, do the standard? I don't know. Hurl yourself off a building or? Uh, I go sleeping I, I was, pills. Yeah. It's hard, you know, dude. Joe, you're just such, like, there's no flair to you. Why? No style. Well, if you're asking me to answer. Joe, you know how many people want to know what does it look like? On the other side? 
Ah, what, what does it look like when somebody leaps off a house? You know, you just want to see what it looks there's like. No, that's the they will never. <laughs> I've never, under, I've never understood the way that yeah. way of killing yourself. I don't get it. I don't understand hanging. I'm just like, what do you? It's like the worst way to kill yourself. Slit the wrist is a good way. Doesn't really hurt. You bleed out in the tub. Not too bad. Um, pills are good. I'd rather hang myself than slit my wrist. No. 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 Nah, what are you talking about? You just slip it over the door handle and you lean forward. And that's Dude, that has got to be one of the worst ways to you die. Go to sleep. I don't think it's like that. Man. It isn't, Joe. It is when you're doing it to yourself. It's different. I, uh, dude, it's <laughs> Joe. I'm joking. I know Jesus you're Christ. joking. I'm. I was gonna say though, it's hard to kill yourself. It's a lot harder than you think. A lot harder than you think. Drinking yourself to death, dude. That would take forever. That would take forever. It's hard to OD. What if you ate McDonald's at the same time? On drug? It, dude, it would take forever. Dude, you never saw that supersize me? What if he was also boozing? No. His Spurlock wouldn't even be here. Dude, you see these fucking, you see these fucking animals walking around? 400 it, it, pound it people, they're not, they're not dropping it dead. It is amazing what the human body can take. Yeah. Dude, when you read, read, Dead. read the Chris Farley book. Like read the che- the the end part about when he died, like how yeah, he but who, was. But who wrote it? Was it authorized? Are there any like details? Like you know, no. There's a whole account, there's the whole account in the book of how he died and like when he yeah, but died. Who wrote it? Who, now, who's making it accountable? I think it's based on like when they were talking to like the prostitutes and stuff that were in the room. Oh, were they're they- reputable. Dude, I, all I'm saying is this. That guy was obviously in shape, terrible physical money, shape. He was in terrible physical shape. Right. And the extent to which he was partying before he died is insanity. I read it. When I read it, I was like, I don't understand how people OD on drugs. Like, yeah, this is it's, fucking cause, crazy. Because it's a book, Joe. No, it's real. Yeah, No, I mean, look, the guy definitely obviously died because of abusing himself. But, you know, when you write the book, they got to, you know, make it bigger. That's like there's a movie out here, the uh, unbelievable true story of survival. And it's a true story. Whatever this movie is, you know it actually happened. But, you know, they got to add all the fucking badass lines, you know? What do you mean? Whenever they do these fucking lines, whenever they do these true, these fuck, when Hollywood makes a movie that's, that's you let's know, look, let's, based on a true story, it means, okay, right. this guy actually survived. Then let's look it up. X, Y, and Z, and then they, they, they add some other shit to it. Let's look it up. Let's not look it up, dude. Come on, man. I'm friends with. Kevin, I don't want to read this fucking thing. Come on, come on, get off of that. You don't want to read it? No, I don't. All right. Jesus fucking Christ, Joe, you're in the comedy community here. Well, I know. I'm not. I'm not. Tra- I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying it was. It when I read it, I was just like you. That the th- the only reason I brought it up is because what you said the the abuse your body can take. You know, Joe, that's why I actually, thought of that because that's what I thought of when I read it. There's actually new studies out there that say eating meatloaf by yourself is more harmful than doing drugs. Oh yeah, Bill. I'd like to slap that meatloaf across your fucking rosy cheeks. Why would you do that, Joe? Because I don't like you, Bill. Why would I you? never have. Joe. <laughs> I'm also grass-fed, Joe. <laughs> uh, you're ass-fed. Oh, jeez. Oh, um, Bill, we Joe. are approaching the 50-minute mark. I say we wrap this puppy up. No, oh, this is effortless. No, we got we to gotta end at 60. Come on, Joe. You got to do the full hour. Why? I mean, Why? Why? Oh, you, you hear that meatloaf talking to yeah, you? Yeah, I'm right? starving. I want to go eat some meatloaf. We we did a couple segments. This is nice. This is what people can expect. Hey, Joe, why don't you fucking carve me off a slice of that fucking meatloaf, you selfish I'll cunt? I'll give you a piece. It's a two-pound meatloaf. You can have some. You mean, you leave, you're going to leave tomorrow and you got a two-pound fucking Friday. meatloaf? Friday. I keep telling you Friday. So you can eat two pounds of fucking meatloaf from here to Friday. Dude, it's, yeah, that's like three meals. It's not a lot. Yeah, but that's not the only thing you're having. I'm just saying, you're getting all the other shit, Could Joe. Meatloaf for you, dinner that, three nights in a row, and that would that be you, it. That you're going to cram down your fucking pie hole. No, it's about like 12 ounces of meatloaf a Dude, day. Dude, I just remember back in the day, my mom would make a meatloaf. We had it like once, and then maybe you had a sandwich, and then you were done. You didn't eat the whole fucking meatloaf. You got enough meatloaf out there for a family of four. For one sitting. Exactly, Joe. No. Dude, you can't eat a 16-ounce steak. Well, Joe, I can I can eat that whole fucking meatloaf right now. I wouldn't do it. Well, all right. Well, that's you. Nobody's asking you to do it. And I'd like you to keep my meatloaf out of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, what are you plugging? Uh, Plug this special. I have did. a new stand-up special out on uh, Netflix, exclusively on Netflix. It's called uh, I'm Sorry You Feel That Way. And uh, I'm very proud of it. 
It's very I, good. I, w- I would think that other people would enjoy it also. It's very good. I've seen it. It's hilarious. I'm not just saying that because you're my friend. It sounds like you are with the lack of excitement in your voice. I'm I've just tired. It's hilarious. It's, it's, yeah, no, Joe. You, you'd rather think about meatloaf. Than I found it fascinating. No, it's <laughs> fucking. <laughs> it's it's great, man. It looks fucking spectacular, and the material's great. I told you that the Donald Sterling bit to me is a classic. I, I and I said this to you the first time I saw it. I didn't think you were ever going to outdo that Schwarzenegger bit. It was so on the nose and of the time, and then I feel like you outdid it with the Sterling bit. I mean, it's I'll such you, a good I bit. I still miss doing that Schwarzenegger one. was fun. It's I miss a great jokes. bit. I miss, uh, I miss the helicopter bit that I was doing on the new one. There's a bunch of them, you know? <clears throat> They're like your kids, Bill. You love them all. You got to let them go to college. You got to let them go. You just got to yeah. let them go. They, get, they grow old and they get married. Yeah. And you know what? You fucking tag another broad and you get a new kid. <laughs> <laughs> and you buy a Challenger. <laughs> oh, Joe, let's talk cars, man. I don't want to because I can't afford the goddamn fucking car I want. And it's making me depressed. Joe DeRosa. A lot of people wouldn't know this. We're going to add a little badass side to Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa wants to get a Dodge Challenger. And I'm trying to tell him, go out and get that fucking Hellcat. Yeah, Joe, it's someday. a $50,000 car. It's just so out of my, it's out of my range what? right now. I can't do it right now. Uh. It sucks. Well, you know something? That car isn't for somebody that thinks about money. Oh, trust me. I'm not really thinking about money. I was ready to be very stupidly with stupidly that, that spending. That car will actually money. retain its value, provided you don't fuck it up. It's the awesomest car ever. It's the only car I've ever seen in my life that I became obsessed with, where every time I saw it, I was like, I want that car. I never gave a shit about cars, ever. So why don't you just at least get at least get one with, that's the Hemi one? Don't get the one that has like the fucking V6 engine and those skinny goddamn tires. No, I, I could afford a couple of the models, but at some point I have to tap out. Fifty grand for a car right now is that would be it's one of the sixty grand. It's sixty. It's fifty nine grand. Well, that's the that listing. Seems... You go in there, you beat them up a little bit. Maybe you get it for fifty five. Ah, uh, yeah, you go in there like a dog, right? Like right, a just, pit bull. Well, I mean, you just go in. Just well, I don't know if on that one because that one's going to be a collector's. Like, fucking maniacs will buy, like, you know, four or five of them, knowing that these fucking cunt bankers, when they turn 60 and they want to recapture their youth, will turn around and pay some money for it. At least at least they hope they do. Guys are doing that shit, and I really think that a lot of these fucking cars aren't going to be worth shit. It's kind of like when baseball cards, like all those Mickey Mantle rookie cards are worth a ton of money because nobody knew they'd be worth money someday. Right. So then in the 70s and 80s, when they saw how much they were worth, all these guys were like, well, someday these cards from the 70s and 80s would be worth... Yeah. And then Tops printed a zillion of them because everybody bought them and they took the money on the short run and none of them are rare and yeah. none of them went up in value. There's a few like a Michael Jordan rookie card or a Wayne Gretzky. There's a couple that actually moved up in price, but like nothing like the Mickey Mantle cards. No, and they're pro- and even those are probably only like three, four hundred bucks, right? I don't imagine they're. Yeah. You know what I looked at the other day, Joe? I looked at a Mercedes Benz E63 like AMG, the station wagon version of it. It was a fucking race car, but it looked like a station wagon. It was one of the coolest fucking cars I've ever driven. Yeah? Yeah, it was badass. And I was trying to tell Verzi how fucking cool the car was. He goes, dude, it's just, he couldn't get past the fact. It yeah, was I can't a, either, man. Station wagon. Oh, you guys, you guys got no fucking. I know, you just like That's the. It's weird. I don't know. It sounds you, like ironic or something, like hipster. No, no, no. Like uh, it's you know, a station it, wagon because it's, it's funny. No, I like, no, well, no. If, if it, you know, it's, listen, it's a sleeper. Hipstery would be if it ran on fucking French fry oil or some horse shit like right. that. Right. No, dude, this is like German engineering at its finest, where they take a fucking station wagon, okay, where it should be a mother driving down the street with pacifiers and fucking apples, and this thing can go zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. It's a fucking race car. Dude, if I showed you the car, dude, it looks like if Batman ever got married, this is what his wife would drive. <laughs> Well, that's that's kind of like the way I was picturing it. I'm like, at the end of the day, it still seems like a mom car because it's a station wagon. Like, why not just get a regular Mercedes or whatever it is? Oh no! What I like about it, Joe, is you don't see it coming. It's the fucking sucker punch that I, I just I I don't know. I you know what? You either like it or you don't. I can't get over how fucking cool this car is. But uh, I just rode a little stiff, Joe. The, the fucking suspension was a little goddamn stiff. You're feeling every fucking bump in the road. It didn't even have a seat in the back. You know, they always have that seat in the way back end when you face the other way. Um, this car did not. Cause it, dude, look at that fucking thing. Look at that thing. I'm showing it to you right now. He's showing me the car now. 
I mean, yeah, you know, as far as a station wagon goes, it's as cool as it can get, but it's a fucking station wagon. Ah, oh, Joe, you're a moron. I'm not a moron. Yeah, you're it's a you're, station wagon. You're yeah, a it's, lady. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> yeah, just a twin turbo. Zero I'm s- saying just get the car that's not a station wagon with the twin turbo. Yeah, come here. Give me that, Joe. Just give me the phone. This is what I can't get. I don't like both, this. Both, both of you. I get it. It's a sleeper. You don't see it coming. It's the Southpaw. No, you know, no, no, no. What? The Southpaw. <laughs> no, it's it's the fucking engineering that goes into that. That fucking car should not go like that. The fucking car that you like, the fucking you know, the Corvettes, everything that's shaped to go fast. <laughs> right. It's a no brainer. Right. It's like I get it. You look at it. It fucking looks fast. My thing about this is what I it's the respect that I have. The fact that you can take this fucking sled and this thing can fuck with a Corvette. All right. That shouldn't happen. Well, that's cool. Yeah, dude, this guy. But I'm saying, would you want to own it? Listen, would I want to own it? Absolutely. fucking Luby. Absolutely. But I, I would I would like to own, you know, if I had three cars, this would definitely be the third car because I just, I think it's fucking cool as shit. Dude, you can throw a whole drum kit in there, stick all this shit in there and go zero to 16, 3.6 Bye. seconds. Bye. Huh? You're sitting here bragging about your Netflix money. Go Wait, buy the when did I brag about I'm my Netflix joking. money, you cunt? You fucking asshole. <laughs> really? Oh, the Netflix you money? You took the bait that easy? Yeah, well, let Jesus. me clarify now for the fucking people out there. I got <laughs> They gave me money, and I had to put it all into the special. So there you go. <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> Jesus I was going to say, Joe. when you were showing me the car, I was going to say, you want to come over here and wave your bank account in my face? <laughs> no, you know what? You know what's funny? I don't know why I didn't say that. No, dude. The only money I make in this business is touring on the road. You know hey. how these fuckers work, dude. Uh, Bill. Dude, Lord of the Rings, they tried to, that thing grossed six billion dollars and everybody worked on it had to sue to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> dude, do you know The Simpsons? In 2002, the studio was still saying The Simpsons was not in profit. <laughs> they just, I, I heard another story today. This guy, this actor, right? By the time he went to negotiate, he had no leverage because the series was over and they didn't give a fuck anyways, which right. is not when you go in to audit them. And the show he was on, they said made no fucking money. And then they went in there and found out it was like this $400 million behemoth. And then they just, so he audited them and they owed him like in the hundreds of millions, something fucking crazy Jesus. like that. Or, or I think, no, I think the story is they owed him $400 million. And they just said, listen, we'll give you a check right now for $50 million or we'll drag this thing out in court for 10 years. Then a lot of people listen like, dude, I'd fucking take... The fucking fifty million is the principle that somebody fucked you in the ass for three hundred fifty million dollars. That they just sit back, just going like, "Yeah, it was stealing from me." What the fuck are you gonna do about it? I probably would have taken the fifty million. I'm embarrassed. Of course to you say. would have. What else are you gonna do? That's what everybody ends up doing. I, I, my moron ass would probably go and fight him, and I'd die a thousand deaths in ten years. Finally, get my money, and I, I would like die a stomach cancer. I bet. I bet if you threatened to go to trial, they'd settle out of court for more than fifty million before you got there. Yeah, but you what, probably squeeze 70, for 150. 70? I'd say 150. Dude, that Lord of the Rings lawsuit, they were supposed to get 7% of the profit. So after $6 billion, I mean, it came up to the, in the hundreds of millions. They settled out of court with them for like 40 million bucks. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm and this is what it is, Joe. And it's, it, it's not even considered stealing, it's just considered how business is done. It's depressing. It's depressing. It's not, How do they live with themselves? I'm getting sad. They, they do. They do, they and they no continue fucking... to, and they continue to prosper. <laughs> and they, have no, they don't Disgusting. give a fuck. Disgusting. Disgusting. They don't give a fuck. That's the only reason why I don't like the Mercedes, because so many people out here that drive it look like they're, like they're those people. Like the fucking people Dude, sitting I was, there going, ah, I'll give you 30 bucks, kid. I was flipping out. I was behind a Mercedes the other day on the road, and I was trying to get somewhere. And this guy's driving like he's got no place to go on all day to get there. And he's on his fucking phone. And he's literally four car lengths behind the car in front of him and just holding me up. And I'm, I was just screaming. I go, oh, because you made your fucking money. Now nobody else has to. Because <laughs> he, he probably was made his day. A rich fucking cunt. Driving around like he didn't have a care in the world. Oh, piss me off. Anyway, <laughs> watch Bill Burr's special. It's really great. I, I think it might be your best work, and uh, I mean that. Uh, what's it called again, though? I keep I can't it's called, remember the name for some called, reason. Go fuck yourself, Joe. Thanks, Bill. What do you mean, thanks, Bill? You, I told you I wanted to promote the fucking special on this goddamn thing. You don't have the fucking decency. To, you can't even remember the fucking name. I forgot. You told me it was the depression said, auction. Yeah. The son of the depression auction. Go uh, fuck wrong. yourself. That one's wrong. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> the mic has been thrown down, Ralphie yeah. May style. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Uninformed's coming back soon. And uh, check JoeDeRosaComedy.com for upcoming tour dates. Uh, I'm in the South next week, Austin in January, and uh, uh, Pennsylvania and New York in uh, New Year's in early January. Okay, you can remember the name of that, can't you? My website? Yeah, I remembered that. Listen to this guy. Listen to him. Oh, go buy your fucking mom mobile. Listen. I know. I know. We gotta. Listen, we gotta no, do no, a no, clean no. rap on this hey, thing. Listen, I just. I just took a picture of your meatloaf. We'll put it up there for you. <laughs> Go for it. All right. See you later, everybody. <laughs>